Welcome, Samadhi. Welcome, Samadhi community, my friends. My name is Amy, and I'm coming to you from my house. I'm really pleased to have you here. So come on in and let's spend some time together. I'm going to focus today on the feet. So you, you're going to need to have access. We're going to do one foot at a time, and you'll need to have access to your feet. You can do this uh, with um, your legs crossed on the earth as, as I am on the floor. You could also have your legs extended straight out in front of you. This practice can be done in a chair. It could be done on a couch, on the edge of a bed. It could also be done in bed. So lots of variety, lots of, um, and you could do it different times in different places. So in addition to, to going through this massage, this self massage, I'm also going to be layering through um, some Ayurvedic practices that you can incorporate in your, in your routine. So this is a nice thing to do when you come out of the shower or bath, if your feet are warm, it's a nice place to start. Um, my feet were a little bit cold, so I, I just took off socks a few minutes ago. I was wearing these. These are actually Samadhi socks. So it says, uh, Samadhi Yoga Studio, yoga is my superpower, which I love. So these are super cozy. I love these socks. So I had my feet in socks for a while, which is a nice place to start. Um, but you could just kick off your shoes, and that's good, too. So we'll begin with our right foot. Find access to your right foot and begin to wring your foot out. So as if it were a washcloth. Continue to sit tall, let your shoulders draw down. Maybe close your eyes. And allow your breath to deepen. So really, really coming into more of a meditative experience. If you have any um, feelings of tightness in the foot, you would be becoming aware of that. If you have conditions like neuropathy or diabetes, if you have plantar fasciitis or maybe some um, differences in your arches, then you may want to take it more gently. Sometimes it means you bring in more vigor. And then find your, uh, find your fingers and place your fingers, thread them through between your toes and use those as spacers. So you're really not doing more than creating that space between your toes, letting your fingers separate the toes. Take a deep, full breath in and out. And then begin to press your fingers in towards your foot. So giving some pressure there and that sort of webbing that exists between the toes. So in Ayurveda, there are practices related to the feet. Release that and begin to pull on your toes. So starting with your big toe, you're going to begin to make your way down towards your pinky toe, towards your small toe. So you don't have to rush with that. So in Ayurveda, working with the feet, oftentimes, um, there's a focus on using the um, oil, so there could be olive oil, it could be almond oil. There's other types of oils you can use like coconut oil, which if you put in your hand, it will begin to soften with the warmth of your hand. You could also use a lotion. So for our purposes, we're going to um, not use any oils or lotion. When you come down to the pinky toe, spend twice as much time because we're going to make our way back up and you want the pinky toe to have its, <laughs> its due. 
finding your way back up. So we're not using the oil or lotion here because we're this particular um, massage that I'm doing is more along the lines of a Thai massage, which is also Thai yoga, and not using any um, anything on your hands. When you do the massage, gives you a little more grip. It allows you to be able to hold on and actually move without any slippage, if that makes sense. When you get back to the big toe, begin to rotate it. So the big toe can take it <laughs> and if it feels okay, you could close your eyes here. If it feels okay, you could bring really full big rotations as you might do. Uh, you could think of like a stick shift or um, if you were playing Atari, like the joystick, the old school Atari. Soften your jaw. You could bring your Mula Bandha here so you could squeeze your groin and get really tall. All right, and then for a few moments, um, begin first to create some friction between your hands, so you're warming your hands up a bit. Maybe notice all those nerve endings or a sense of stimulation and of the nerve endings in your hands, and then bring your hands to your foot. You can notice the temperature and allow for some organic massage here. Oftentimes people like the, the inner blade, the big toe side, maybe pressing or rubbing up and down that inner blade or perhaps or somewhere else. So you may find that you naturally close your eyes to kind of dive into some sensation. Try to sit tall. We tend to, when we get focused, sometimes we lose alignment. And then we're gonna clap the foot. So begin to clap with as much vigor as feels okay. It's okay if there's stinging. So this is very stimulating for the foot. Little seated ovation, all right. And then you could kiss your foot or you could blow your foot a kiss and we'll take it to the other side. So crossing your legs to gain access to the left foot. Begin to wring it out like a washcloth. So it could be different from one side of your body to the other. We all have different levels of elasticity from one hip to the other. Our bodies are asymmetrical. There could be subtle or really significant differences between sides. So inviting in curiosity about that. Really wringing out, detoxifying here. And then we'll bring the fingers between the toes as place keepers, as space spacers at this point, sitting tall. So in Ayurveda, when we think about connecting with the body, with the skin and different parts of the body, there's the topic of cleansing. And traditionally in Ayurveda, you would only focus on certain parts of the body to wash. Um, and that would be the hair. So if you have hair on your head, you, would, you could wash that. And I know not everybody washes their hair every time they're in the shower, but if you if it was time to, to, to wash your hair, you would start there. You could also use um, soap or you know um, body wash on or shampoo on the scalp if you don't have hair. Certainly you can do a little massage. So you're gonna really press your fingers now at your toes and continue to sit tall. So you would cleanse the hair, you would wash your underarms you would wash um, everything that um, would be covered by your underwear, where you're wearing underwear, and you'd really wash your feet too. Let that go and begin to pull on your toes, starting with the big toe.
I know that when I take a shower, a lot of times when I get in, it's just sort of this automatic thing. I feel the warmth of the water and I'll take my soap or body wash and I start lathering my arms. It just feels really nice and my arms are right there and accessible, easy to see. And um, in the Ayurvedic tradition, which is a sister science to yoga, um, the thought would be that that is, it's really not necessary if you were gardening or maybe working um, with some machinery and you had grease on you from that. When you get to the, um, the little toe, give it twice as much time. Um, then certainly if you, you know, were, were extra dirty, it would make sense to lather up. But in day-to-day -day life, um, typically you wouldn't need that. And if you did use those kinds of things like soap or body wash, you're actually stripping the natural oils from your body. So that would be avoided. And once you get up to the big toe, give it a little bit more rotating and movement, maybe like a big circle. Another thing about um, being in the shower is sometimes people will um, either begin to adjust the temperature of the shower toward cool uh, or all the way to cold and others will turn it right from a warm temperature to cold that that may or may not work for everyone you know, there may be medical conditions I'm certainly not a doctor so for some folks it may make more sense to um, I'm going to pause with what I was saying and say to bring some organic movement into your foot maybe that inner blade or somewhere else um, so some folks might want to temper that and maybe just come into a, um, you know, warm water versus cold. Others may go all the way to cold and count. So maybe 10 seconds or 20 seconds. Some people even go longer, but typically 20 seconds would be a long time. And th there are benefits to that for a lot of people. Not only can it be invigorating, but it actually can also be relaxing um, so people can use that for uh, insomnia so you can use that really any time of the day and it's okay to do that close to bedtime and now we're going to clap the foot begin to shift your weight back bring your feet out in front of you with your knees bent draw your shoulders back and down close your eyes taking a few moments here to allow there to be some resonance from the work that you did on your feet <clears throat> so our feet have a lot of um, connections to the other systems in the body reflexology which is also thousands of years old, um, manipulates the feet, different parts of the feet, as you may well know, to have an impact on different systems in the body and different conditions. <clears throat> Cross your legs once again and come up into a tall seat. So we worked on the feet. Now we're going to do a little bit of work from, from the neck up. Draw your chin down towards your chest and then your right ear towards your right shoulder. Continue to sit tall, chin toward chest, left ear toward left shoulder, chin back toward chest, and then inhale your chin back up to neutral. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, chin lowers down toward chest. Inhale to neutral and Exhale, let your head fall back. Inhale to center. Exhale, chin down towards your chest. You can think of this as nodding yes. Inhale to center. Exhale, let the head drop back. Find your way back to center. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, turn your head toward the right. Inhale to center. Exhale to the left. 
Inhale, center. This can be a really good exercise to remember. Exhale, right? Especially because you can remember yes and no head movements. Inhale, yes. And exhale over to the left. Maybe thinking of a high quality yes and no, which is something that we can connect with sometimes and cultivate in the practice as we get to learn what works for us and what doesn't. Interlease your fingers and as you exhale, reach forward through your palms. Really, really reach as if you're pressing away. You might even come into a little bit of a rounding of the back as you would in a cat stretch. And then inhale, arms come up and overhead. Perhaps there's a little arch in your low back, like a dog tilt. And then release your arms back behind you. Interlace your fingers, draw your upper arm bones in toward each other, lift up in your heart. You could come into Mula Bandha here, squeezing your groin. Beautiful, and then let your hands come back together at your heart. Uh, allow your eyes to close, soft, Bend in your neck, so allowing the chin to drop slightly forward. Sit really tall. Going deep inside in your mind's eye and vision yourself standing on the earth. Feet planted on the earth that grounded energy. Focusing on things that may be happening in your life, things that may be happening in the world. As if you could lift your focus way, 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 thousands and thousands of miles away. And then allow all the focus to come back to you, to your inner world, to your ability to connect with your own experience, your own body, your own private thoughts, your mind's eye. Imagine your inner light. So maybe that's something that's deep inside of you. Perhaps it's more of a aura around you, outside of you, spherical in front of you, behind you, overhead, down below. Encapsulating not only your physical body, but your energetic body, spiritual body. Remembering that when you take time to take care of yourself, you do not betray the suffering of the world. It's healing to come back to your, to your own self, to your highest self. And anything that resonated with you Take in, breathe in, and anything that may not have, just allow that to drift away. And we'll seal our practice at our time together. Remembering that after this, if you would like, you could certainly come into Shavasana, you could lie down, you could sit in meditation, you may want to put oil or lotion on your feet. You could do that. You could uh, put socks on top of that. So what you do after this is entirely up to you. But for this moment, we'll seal our practice and our time together. And we'll join our voices in a song of Om on an exhale. So take a deep, full breath in. Om. Adios.
Shanti, 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 peace. Peace to you and peace to our earth. The light in me honors and bows to the light in you. Namaste. Thank you for this time together. Blessings for your day.